Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Just before this video starts, I want to give you the opportunity to win a giveaway here on my channel. I'm going to be giving away one $50 Xbox gift card and one $50 PlayStation card. If you guys want to win these cards, you have to go down below, subscribe to my channel, and also comment, I subscribed and want either the Xbox card or the PlayStation card. You will better your chances of winning these gift cards if you are A, active on my channel, B, liking my videos, and C, commenting and just staying active on all of my content. I will be giving these gift cards away once my channel hits 1,000 subscribers. We are currently sitting around 250, so the gift giveaway is a little far into the future, but I know you guys can hit it. Let's jump into the video. You guys better be ready, because we've got more franchise mode, Draft to Glory, coming up right after the intro. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode 3 of our NHL 20 Draft to Glory on franchise mode for NHL 20. Today guys, we are jumping into the 2021 NHL entry draft to start off this video. If you missed last episode, go back and check it out first of all. Um, there should be a playlist somewhere around here. Um, but anyways, we won the lottery finally after being the worst team for two years in a row. And we land the franchise power forward, Sergei Smirnov here, looking like an absolute monster of a player. He's going to be really good. Uh, he's going to come into our team right away. Uh, you guys did see that last episode I kind of uh, showed it. It was uh, <laughs> it was like a funny moment where, um, where Smirnov was like, I'm glad to be interviewed by a team as good as yours. I'm like, oh yeah, we're, we're really good. Yeah, we're... Uh, we're going to be good once we get him, maybe. Maybe. But um, still a lot of work to do with this team. Uh, we are nowhere near where we want to be, but that's just how Draft of Glory is going to go here. Uh, we have had some exponential growth in these two players here in uh, Sean Merritt. He did only go up three ratings, to be fair. But um, Wilson Mills, guys, look at the numbers. Look at these numbers. He was like at 58 59 rated player maybe even 56 he might have been lower look at those stats like look at that that is absolutely absurd um yeah no I, I have no words for how good he's been how much he's grown I am just thoroughly impressed with Wilson Mills um making a case for being one of the better players on our team here moving into the future so anyways guys we have got a lot of draft picks, well not a lot, we've got seven draft picks to get through, and then an entire season, but um, I do believe I have pinned all the players that I am planning on drafting. So we've got Smirnov number one. Um, I'm looking at Teravainen for round two. Uh, he fits our system somewhat well. Um, he is a three-year ETA, but we know that we can cut those ETAs down. Based on Wilson Mills last year, it said he was going to be a five-year ETA. By the looks of it, he's probably going to be about three now, maybe two. Um, and then after Smirnov, uh, I've got Brant Clark on the radar for round three. Uh, hopefully, he'll be pretty decent too, two-way defenseman right-handed. Um, and he doesn't have the uh, balanced uh, scheme fit, unfortunately, but who cares about that? Abitzer, I don't think we're going to land. He's a little bit too close um, to the second round for us to get him in the third round. Um, but then looking into the fourth round after uh, Tara Vinen, Smirnov, and Clark, we're looking at Yakupov here, another right-handed defenseman, but he's a guaranteed medium top four. Um, and then after that, uh, there is a player in here that I've been looking at that I don't think I marked. Uh, his name's Galina. I think he's like a one or two bar elite. So we'll be looking at him. Um, and then Osborne's going to be our sixth round pick, most likely. And then there's one other guy that I haven't pinned that, again, I want to draft. So, without further ado, let's hit the entry draft and let's land Sergei Smirnov. So, guys, you got you to gotta help me with nicknames here. Uh, 
what are we going to call Smirnov? Because he is just, like, he put up some pretty decent points for an 18-year-old. Uh, he's NHL ready, so there's no hesitation here. He's a franchise player. Only 80 rated, so that hurts a little bit. But 80 rated still pretty high for our team. Um, yeah, he's, <laughs> look at the shot right now. It's not as good as I was hoping, but it's still pretty good. Like, he's got nothing below three stars. So by the time he's finished his growth, he's probably going to be the best player in the NHL. Um, so yeah, absolute stud of a pick there. He's going to be amazing for our team. But you guys need to help me come up with nicknames. Go down in the comments below. Leave nicknames for Smirnov. What do we call him? Do we call him like Six Pack? Do we call him like, <laughs> come on, there's so many different references we could make for him here. Smirnov. Uh, you can call him Ice. I don't know. You could do all sorts of different things like that. So, uh, guys, let me know in the comments below what should uh, Sergei Smirnov's nickname be because, you know, Smirnov, like the alcohol. Yeah. Um, anyways, looking through the rest of this draft, a lot of high tops. Oh, Tamernas. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, we missed out on some good players there, and so did a lot of other teams. Tamernas would have been a nice left-handed addition for our team. Um, Sillinger is an awesome right winger there. Uh, man, if we could have traded picks, I would have picked up at least two of those picks. And then Jesper Walstead goes to Arizona. He's a high elite tendy. My gosh. Okay, that is a stellar draft for a whole bunch of these teams. Uh, Brodazewick, I was looking at. He's a 75 rated, so a steal for the Canadiens there. Um... Besides that, lots of, like, this is a strong first round, like a lot of 70s and above. My gosh. Okay, so now we are faced with the challenge of landing a pick as good as a whole bunch of these other teams, because there have been some really good picks through here, but we're going to go with the guaranteed. We're going to go with Juha Teravainen, 66 rated 2A forward. Um, he should be just fine. He's six foot two, 2A forward. Um, yeah. Yeah. How many points? He only had four points in 24 games, so that's a little worrying. But, again, I don't even know if he's going to be in our system this year. Looking through the rest of this, McTavish actually would have been a better pick. That's too bad. Okay, um, where was Mason McTavish playing? Uh, Peterborough. Okay, so yeah, he would have been a better pick. But you had Terrabine and we had the full scouting report on. Didn't want to take any chances. We got to make all these draft picks count. If we're going to be successful at all, eventually. Um, looking through here, low elite in Yaskin. Um, Bitzer is a nice low elite as well. Goes to Vancouver. And besides that, everything's pretty much expected there in order. Uh, so now we are going to jump quite a bit out of order. There are two, um, what do you call it, two gems there. But I'm not looking for gems. I'm looking for elites. So, Brant Clark, welcome to the um, the Spartans. Like, medium elite, only 55 rated. So, not the most amazing pick as far as overall goes. But, being a defenseman, playing for Barry, he's going to be just fine. He's looking really good. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we'll see some growth in him. I'm expecting it, especially with the elite potential. Oh, my gosh, a goaltender right after, and he is 66 rated. Thomas Nylander, oh my gosh, okay, um, that kind of sucks, okay, anyways, uh, moving on to our next pick here, there's anybody else in this round, another elite there, Purcell, oh, that's a nice pick up as well, a center, um, so yeah, that would have been, that would have been pretty decent for our team, but anyways, now we're moving on to round four, um, we got pick 97, but I'm looking at another guaranteed in Stanislav Yakupov. So, 57 rated defensive defenseman. A little bit higher rated than uh, Clark, but he is 20 years old as well. Remember that, guys. So, who knows if he's ever going to grow properly. Anyways, um, on to the next round. Let's check out. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? There's so many freaking elites in here that we're not landing. Like, come on. Come on, diets right after. And then, oh, starter and Lennox, like. It's just frustrating, guys, when my scouts don't even, like, look into these players and they turn out to be that good. Like, or that high potential. Maybe not that good, but they have high potential for sure. Okay. 
So the next player we were looking at here, um, where is he? I think we're going to take the risk here on Brian Galina. Um, there's nobody else really worth taking around here. Like if we go all the way down to the next player we're looking at, which would be Osborne way down there at 183. Um, yeah, we're going to take the risk on Galena. Probably not going to pay off. I'm going to say it right now, guys. It's most likely not going to pay off, but you never know. So Galena, bottom six, of course. All right, well, that's too bad. Um, I bet you there was some elites right after him, too. Let's see. Anybody? Anybody we seriously missed on? Uh, Hinote, maybe, or Hinote. I don't know how you say it. Anyways, high back up there in Turvinen. Okay, and on to our sixth rounder here. We're going to take Osborne just because. Is that another Brent Clark? No, it was Brendan Clark. Um. But yeah, no, we're going to take Osborne because he's a low top four, which is fairly decent for this late of a round. And did we miss anybody? Low elite Rodriguez. Um, who's the other guy that we were looking at? Um, two of mine, and yeah, he's a low elite. Oh, starter Tarnstrom. That's a nice pick late there. Um... Yeah, so this is going to be our last pick here. I'm looking at a player by the name of Burmistrov. Um, I think, again, just because he's got a chance at being uh, an elite. It's pretty low, I'm pretty sure. Or we could take Janssen here, Kim Janssen. Um, eh. So maybe... On Kim Janssen, but where is this uh, Burmistrov I was looking at? I'm not seeing him. Okay, so I went way out of order there. Anyways, we're going to go back up and uh, take Janssen there instead, because I don't know where Burmistrov went. Anyways, um, again, big risks. Maybe the they'll pay off maybe there'll be some reward nope <laughs> no he's just a grinder uh so yeah those are some pretty poor picks there unfortunately so that's gonna wrap up this draft fairly quick there um but yeah first four three four picks were pretty good um osborne is not bad either but smirnov is easily gonna be the highlight of this draft there's no question so yeah, I'm, I'm pleased that we landed him. Uh, we're going to re-sign coaches. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna just going to skip through this, and I'll be back with you once we're at the contract re-signing phase or like we're uh, just starting to sim past it after I've offered all the contracts. Shit. Okay, guys, so... um. Unfortunately, the Testu did not sign. Um, neither does Cuckoo. Smirnov does. Joachim Ryan does. Okay, okay. Yeah, a lot of guys did not actually sign. Um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of, like, not computer-generated, but, like, computer-added players to our team. Um, yeah, so... Again, team's going to be stupid weak. Um, there's really no question about that. So, yeah, I think we're just going to go through another uh, another season and um, another playoffs and just check out kind of where everybody's at. Like, Smirnov's the third best player on our team, and he's a rookie. We just drafted him. Um, hopefully, Jekamovs can get a little more growth I mean obviously he's had huge minus seasons here so far but he did have some improvement on points last year so that's good um he played a lot of games in the NHL so we'll see what kind of effects uh the sim and losing this badly has on the players 
Um, hopefully the morale drop off isn't too bad. Hopefully they can actually put up decent enough points to get some growth, but I'm really not expecting it. The other thing I do want to go check out guys is in the free agency. I want to see who are, um, what do you call it? Who are some like unsigned players? So like, um, what does accepted offer means? Uh, I don't know. I'm. I mean, guys like this, like he's not drafted. Stanislav, Stanislav uh, Nikoloshin, we could sign. It's just, it's guys like that where they're undrafted. We are allowed to go after them, and honestly, like it wouldn't even like affect our team that much. They're fairly decent potentials. So who's a rest above? No, he's signed or he's drafted by Philly. And great, yeah. Um, those guys are all signed. Even Soder, yeah. Soderlund is signed. Yeah, so that's too bad because a lot of these guys are already um, drafted, that kind of thing. But um, maybe not all of them. What about tendies? Because that goaltending is something else we could seriously use. Oh, that's just for two ways. Okay. Hoskinen. Oh, yeah, he was drafted. Okay. Eli Huso. Yeah. Georgiev. Was he not drafted by the Rangers? Could have sworn he was. Okay, guys, so I think we're going to go and just pull off some, like, some kind of, like, steals here with the uh, potentials on these players. I mean, the ratings are terrible, but since these guys are um, undrafted players, we can go after them. I believe that was one of the rules I set was that undrafted players are on the board for us. Um, there's not going to be very many of them, but uh, we are still allowed to check them out. I'm looking for just like some terrible ratings like Summers. Honestly wouldn't even be that bad, Bob Summers. Um So this is kinda like our free agency here, guys, is that we're allowed to go after certain players, but there really aren't that many of them. And honestly, guys like Jack Quinn and uh Aiden Prut Pruter, I believe it is. Pruter, yeah, guys like those we can go after. Like they're, they're probably not gonna even hit like a medium top nine, but you never know. Like it doesn't hurt to pursue those guys. So, um, anybody else? Like I'll even take freaking medium top six D's here. Nineteen year old there. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's, uh, that's a few players we're going to go after. I'm not expecting much. Um, they should sign because again, like they weren't even drafted. So Pruter, Quinn, uh, Nicholson or Nikolashin, uh, Summers and Zubov all sign. So that's five additional players, but again, very low rated. We're not going to have much success there. Uh, with those guys, I'm expecting not to have a lot of success, but um, who knows? They might get a lot of growth since they are playing in the AHL. And, oh, I forgot to upgrade club seats. That is an error. Oh, no, not customized jerseys. You guys can see the jerseys here. So the uh, team uniforms are very similar to... Are they going to load? There we go. They're like almost exactly similar to the um, the jerseys you saw in episode one for the uh, for the Warriors. So yeah, the Spartans jersey is very close to that same design. They look pretty decent, but yeah. Uh, so if you guys actually look in the bottom corner, um, you can see our owner's happiness is terrible right now so that is why I turned on the uh, no GM firing um, 
because again don't want that um i just upgraded the club seats uh they want so concession suites that's what we need to upgrade really um and as far as our lines go smirnov's currently sitting on the top line which is a little in or uh I mean, I don't know why he's on the left wing. He should probably be on this side. But this season, I'd say that we are probably looking into a center. I don't know who exactly, but uh, Tara Vinen's a pretty decent pick there. Um, and then we got the 73s there on the wings. Those guys should be just fine. Tara Vinen fits very nicely on that second line. Wow, okay. Um, what else? Smirnov, how well does he fit? Yeah, he's kind of all over the place. Doesn't fit too well on any of those lines, but um, these guys would actually be better off. Like Mills would be better off on the third line for now. Is there any change there? Okay, I think we're going to do that as well. Um, Sokolov does not fit at all, neither does Ericsson. So Smirnov's kind of the only guy who's looking decent on that line. Uh, that's nice to see. Uh, Jakimov's up to an 82. Uh, Nyla Kynan hopefully can at least hold that uh, 78 rating for this season. And then we got really weak bottom pairing players. Um, by the looks of it, Vikingstad grew enough to actually get himself an NHL spot. And uh, Maddox Ludwig is going to be our minor league, major league starting goaltender at 75 rating, low elite. Um, and yeah, like even Stanislav Yakupov's almost good enough to be like in our team here which is a little bit sad but you know what whatever like we'll deal with it um summers actually fits the top line better okay um and galena i drafted is totally fits the second line my god hmm that's nice that's not as bad as I was expecting for the AHL. Um, is Schmidt the only guy who fits there well? Like, I think he is. So we'll put him on the top, Aaron. Um, and then Tendies. Yeesh. <laughs> Yikes. That is very weak. Okay. So the AHL is going to have an absolute terrible season. Um, I don't think there's a lot I can do to really... Really? Really? Gibbons fits that much better? Okay, well... Um, we have a non-center playing center, if that's how you want it. Um, Sokolov... Does he fit anywhere, like, well? Jordan Nolan's one of the guys that's throwing off all the chemistry. So I think we're going to leave that as is. Uh, I don't want Tara Vinen to have a bad season, though. I kind of prefer that, that he's playing on like the second or third line. So yeah, I think we're going to go kind of move the lines down one, Tara Vinen, Mills, and Merritt. So hopefully those guys will grow. And I'm expecting a big season out of Smirnov, but <laughs> who can tell at this point? Um, Smirnov instantly gets an A. Um, Jakimov's still our captain there. Um, and Tara Vinen was supposed to be wearing 93, but by the looks of it, McGilney's got that on. Uh, Mills was actually number 50, not 51, but the, again, another guy on that number. Um, so yeah, everything's looking all right, I guess, and we're going to simulate through this season. I will see you guys at the end of the season I guess okay guys so at the end of the season we go for a franchise low yet again uh, 61 losses one overtime loss and 20 wins on the season for 41 points dead last in the league again if we take a look at it yeah 32nd only 10 behind Columbus and uh, 20 behind the Islanders, so two other teams that really are not performing very well, uh, which is unfortunate, but 
you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, and then if we take a look at Columbus, they definitely have a better team than us. No question. But uh, too bad they're not performing very well. And then there's us with really literally nothing. Um, the only kind of player we've got right now is Sergei Smirnov. Put up 58 points in his rookie season. Uh, 28 goals, 30 assists. So not poor at all. Um, and then if we go and check out the entire league on scoring, uh, Tyler Sagan puts up 116 points as a 30-year-old. McDavid puts up 109. Kutcher puts up 109. And uh, Tavares, Crosby, Kane, and Ovechkin also up on the 100-point mark. Debrinkit hits a 91 at just 24 years old. Holy crap. Alex Debrinkit. That is amazing. Uh, Rantanen injured, but looking really good too. If we go and check out rookie skaters, Smirnov leads the league, fortunately. So by the looks of it, we might actually get one award this year. Um, besides that, not much. Um, and then if we go look at rookie goalies, uh, Vikingstad actually had not a terrible year. Um, how many wins did he have? Had six wins, 15 losses, but he also played half of our games. Um and then overall goalies, 41 wins for Vasilevsky uh, and 40 for Pekarine. Wow, some decent seasons there from the attendees. Okay, so Smirnov's going to win himself the call. They're good for him. Um, but besides that, guys, uh, we're just going to simulate straight through to the playoffs. Or not through to the playoffs, my bad. Uh, through to the draft. Okay, guys, so to end off the season, the Vancouver Canucks win the Stanley Cup, and the Calder Cup goes to the Stockton Heat. Um, so definitely, I wouldn't say unexpected, but uh, a little bit of a surprise there as far as uh, the playoffs went. So let's go check them out. Playoff stats, um, Vancouver goes through Edmonton in seven, Minnesota in five, St. Louis in five, and then Pittsburgh in six. Pittsburgh got to the finals going through Washington in seven, uh, Philly in six, Tampa in six, and then dropped it to Vancouver. Looking at the AHL, um, Stockton Heat swept the, I believe it's Charlotte Checkers, uh, four nothing in the finals. Um, they also beat San Antonio in six, uh, Manitoba in seven, and, um, who else? Oh, yeah, Rockford in uh, in four. My bad. Um, looking at the Charlotte Checkers, they also beat uh, or they beat um, the Rochester Americans in six, uh, Lehigh Valley in four, and then uh, Hartford Wolfpack in four as well. So your, or we can check out awards now. Uh, your Canucks are the... Stanley Cup champions, Flyers won the President's Trophy, Philly won it two out of the last three years, good for them, Clarence Campbell goes to Vancouver, Pittsburgh wins Prince of Wales, and then, uh, okay, that's AHL, my bad, and then individual awards, Sagan wins the Art Ross, McDavid wins the Hart, Carlson wins a back-to-back -back Norris, Sagan also wins Lady Bing, Smirnov wins the Calder there, so finally an award for our, um, what do you call it? For uh, the Spartans there, Bo Horvat wins himself the Conn Smythe. Okay, Carter Hart wins back-to-back -back Vesnas, and he also wins a William M. Jennings. Uh, Jalmerson wins the Bill Masterton, and the Jack Adams Award goes to Chicago's coach. Kopitar wins the Selkie, McDavid wins the Lindsay, and Tavares finally breaks Ovechkin's streak with the Rocket. My gosh. <laughs> So guys, I haven't really showed you anything yet on the draft class, but I'm not even going to be upset this year if we do not win the uh, if we do not win the lottery because the two players that I'm looking at, obviously we're looking at centers to go alongside um, Smirnov now. So the centers I'm looking at are Matthew Zavoy and uh, Colin the Duke, ranked three and four in the draft. The reason why I'm checking these players out is because, one, they have overload, and two, they fit our systems well. They are centers. Um, now that I'm looking at it, Leduc would probably fit our team better, to be honest. But um, 
Savoza High Elite, you can't pass up on those. And uh, Lambert. Wait, Lambert's an overload too? Oh my gosh. Yeesh. Okay. Um, so maybe, I mean, if we win the lottery, we could take Lambert, but it doesn't make sense. Shane Wright put up over 100 points in junior this year. Um, Savoy, not quite there, put up 90. Uh, 94, I think. So yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a couple guys here that actually fit our team properly. Grigorenko, even, he would be like a third line center, but not going to be drafting him most likely. Uh, the other elites that we are looking at is this uh, Commissaric here. Jay Commissaric, he is a uh, gem of a goalie, an elite goaltender, and he's ranked at 140th. Besides that, we got two elites, or two low elites here we're looking at, in Huselius and uh, Ventacashin, I think. I don't know how you say it. Ventacashin, I don't, I don't know. Um, anyways, though, besides that, there's just like a lot of low top sixes and low top four defenders. Like, it's really weak. So, lottery results are in, and we drop four. We're three spots to the fourth overall pick. Ooh. Uh, the Islanders luck out again with the lottery. Columbus lands number three, and Arizona wins the lottery from pick number 13. Wow. So, by the looks of it, we're going to be landing Colin LeDuc here. Uh, 5'10", two-way forward. Magic hands, 200 foot game and skating. That's what you like to see. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to get Savoie. That's too bad. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be next episode. So retiring players, guys. Got Ryan Getzlaff finally calls it a career at 87 rated. Paul Stastny, Thomas Vanek, Zadino Chara. As far as goalies go, Craig Anderson calls it a career at 41. And uh, Curtis McKelney also does at 39. So Getzlaff and Stastny become uh, coaches. Uh, Derek Englin becomes a scout. And did we lose more coaches? Doesn't look like it. Not this year. Okay guys, so that is going to be wrapping it up for this episode. If you're enjoying this Draft the Glory franchise mode, go down below, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, make sure you enter in my subscriber giveaway that I will be doing once we hit a thousand subscribers, and um, make sure to leave comments below on how you can think how you think I can improve this series. Um, we got a bright spot in our team now with Sergei Smirnov, but we do need uh, to add some pieces around him. Uh, another player that really grew well was uh, Wilson Mills, but that is going to pretty much be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, this is Etanios signing out, and see ya!